What's up guys? So today we are going to go through the Insta360 website and look at all of the specs on the new camera they've just announced. The Insta360 Nano S. Is this camera for you? We'll find out. Insta360 just announced their Insta360 Nano S. Um, and I'm going to go through the website and give you my first impressions as to what's going on. Um, last year they released this camera, the Insta360 One, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. So it's basically an Insta360 Nano that I can put on a tripod and I can put it somewhere. It has amazing stabilization. I can still plug it directly into my phone and use all of the technology that my phone has, but I can also put it on a tripod and put it somewhere. It has an external button on it that I can double click and start a video just like this one immediately. So then I was like, they're probably not going to come out with another Insta360 Nano, but they did. So since the Insta360 Nano came out, there's been some improvements on technology. Insta360 came out with the Insta360 One that um, added some amazing um, six axis stabilization, um, ended up recording 4K video. Um, there's Bluetooth technology so that you can sit it at a distance and control it with a Bluetooth remote. Um, there's Wi-Fi capabilities. Um, and you can also connect it to your phone. So when the Insta360 One came out, it was like, that's their best idea. That's great as far as a consumer camera that's affordable. Now they've got a beast that looks like a big soccer ball that I really, really want, but will never be able to afford. When they came out with this camera, the Insta360 One, I thought it was the best idea they had as far as a consumer grade camera goes. Because you could plug it into your phone and use all the technology um, of the app, which is something the Insta360 excels in. Um, most of their cameras on the consumer level plug right into your cell phone and they have an app. Um, and they were the first people that I saw that flipped the app upside down so that you could you know, look at the, the app correctly while the camera was plugged into the bottom of the phone. And so they had a lot, of, a lot of good ideas that went into their mobile um, cameras. And then when they came out with the Insta360 One, it was everything that I wanted from Insta360 One. The only thing that Insta360 could do would be improve the lenses and improve the technology. But as far as form factor, it's tiny. It's super tiny, guys. As far as um, stitching, beautiful stitches. As far as um, quality, great. Stabilization is there. So one of the benefits that the Insta360 One has over the Insta360 Nano S is the fact that you can put it on a tripod and walk away. But something that the Insta360 Nano S can do is you can put it on your phone and you can walk around with it in your hand on your phone. But you can already do that with the Insta360 One. So who is the Insta360 Nano S for? All right, guys, so we're going to go through the website. I have information about the Insta360 One on a different screen. Um, so I can walk you guys through the differences um, and we'll go through the Insta360 Nano S and see if the specs are important enough for you to buy it. From what I've seen so far is they've taken the form factor of the Insta360 Nano and they've jam-packed all the Insta360 One technology into the Nano and upgraded the Nano to the Nano S. So still a very cool camera and I believe it has a place in the industry. Um, so let's figure out who this camera is for. So right off the bat, 
turn your iPhone into a 360 camera, which is a great idea. Um, you've got your phone on you all the time, or at least I know I do. Um, and being able to slap an accessory onto it to all of a sudden turn your phone into a 360 camera is a great idea. Since I've been doing 360 degree videography and photography, I've been focused more on putting the camera on a tripod and sitting it somewhere or putting it on a selfie stick and walking with it. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, so this is made for your iPhone. It's compatible with all the iPhones that are out there now, including the iPhone X, which is what I have. 4K, 360 degree video, a 20 megapixel 360 degree photos. Shoot 4K 360 wherever, whenever. Is that a Shakira song? Um, and you can see from this picture, um, the iPhone X is about the size of a regular iPhone. It's smaller than the Plus. And the camera just sticks out at the top a little bit. Um, you know, it's a small form factor. Um, and people walk around all the time with their phones out taking pictures. So that's pretty cool. Um, multi view. So this is something interesting. I really hope that it's a part of the Insta 361, but being able to, you know, capture multiple views. So look at this video, guys. You can see one option is you can see the front camera and the back camera at the same time, which is cool. This other view is awesome. Being able to share this on social media, to share a live stream video from multiple angles is brilliant. I've tried several times in this past year to do a live feed from my Garmin Verb or a live feed from my Insta 361 and, and live streaming just kind of seemed awkward. You can't really control what people are looking at. You know, like where the guy's playing the drum here, the uh, person that's holding the camera, you can kind of just see a small version of his face. I think that's really cool. Um, available on Facebook Live, YouTube Live, Periscope, and I can't read other languages. So whatever that is. So I think that's pretty cool, guys. So that's exciting. 360-degree um, video chat. So this is pretty cool. I was watching uh, some other videos where people have tested this out, and apparently the person that starts the chat controls what people see. But it's still really cool. Um, and the options here they have here is friends. Um, and I believe friends is really what this camera is geared towards. It's geared towards... Um, kind of a selfie cam, Snapchat type, um, you know, I'm holding my phone and taking a selfie, kind of. I believe that's really what this camera is for. So, free capture. So, I've played around with free capture a lot, um, and that a lot of cameras are doing this now. Um, GoPro Fusion's doing it, the uh, Garmin Verb 360 does it, um, and the Insta 361 does it. And now the Insta360 Nano S um, has um, free capture. Um, and I think it's a great concept. And it really takes your 360 video to the next level and gives 360 video more purpose. Free capture is a really cool way to convert your video into something most people can look at on their Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, and I think that's pretty awesome. Real time stabilization. Uh, the Insta 361 um, is one of the first cameras that I had that had amazing stabilization. It looks like this is not going to disappoint. So let's switch it to the original. And look how shaky the original footage is. Um, but what these cameras do, guys, is they, they grab um, data from the accelerometer in there. And the 6-axis six, um, six image stabilization within the camera it's got all these little gyroscopes and accelerometers and all these little um, physical things in the camera that um, record movement and then they use that data to stabilize the footage so that's pretty awesome ready to share anywhere so one of the areas that Insta360 excels in is the app since their cameras from the start have been built to plug into your phone they focused a lot of energy on their app and guys, to be honest, if your camera doesn't have a good application that comes with it, in my opinion, it's not a very good camera. It's not very thought out. This app has sharing capabilities, um, which is awesome. Um, we got a new color, guys. Black. Um, I love the idea of black. 
The only thing downside is that I bought a white phone. <laughs> but you know, a lot of a lot of phones out there now are either black or silver. Okay guys, so now we're on the specs page. I'm not going to compare the two nanos. I'm going to compare the Insta360 Nano S with the last camera that the Insta360 released, which is the one. Um, Cause these are the two that are current in technology. As far as size goes, the Insta360 Nano S, as you can see is 110 millimeters tall. Whereas the Insta360 one is 96 millimeters tall. So the Insta360 one is a little shorter. So when it comes to width, the Insta360 Nano S is 21 millimeters thick. That's from the end of that's from the end of the lens to the end of the lens. On the Insta361 is 35.34 millimeters. You have 14 more millimeters in thickness on the Insta361. And where that's going to come into play is the stitching. So the stitching on the Insta360 Nano S um, the lenses are closer together so you're gonna have a better stitch but to be honest guys the Insta361 has an amazing stitch but if you're planning on putting this thing in your mouth Ben um, then <laughs> you'll want something a little smaller but if this thing's attached to your phone you're not gonna want to put that in your mouth so just say it okay so look on this picture we have a shutter button so what that means is if I have an adapter um, I can put this somewhere else and hit the shutter button and, and leave it there. The only thing I don't know is whether this can record video and fo photos to the SD card by itself without being attached to the phone. If it can do that then basically guys you just need like a, a little adapter. Um, and the original Insta360 Nano came with a tripod. Well, it didn't come with it, but you could get a tripod adapter. And since these are the same size, you can probably get that too. So let's go to the device specifications. So the aperture is f2.2, which is exactly the same as the Insta361. The photo resolution is 24 megapixels on the Insta361, which is 6,912 by 3,456. So the Insta361 has a better photo resolution. Um, as far as the video resolution, 4K footage at 30 frames per second on the Insta360 Nano S. The video resolution on the Insta361 is the same, but Insta361 also has um, a lower resolution at 60 frames per second so you can do you can do slow motion on the Insta 361 um, the photo formats JPEG INSP and RAW um, those are exactly the same on the Insta 361 video format um, MP4 INSV and log that's exactly the same on the Insta 361 compatible devices all of the iPhones since the 6 and up Compatible devices for the Insta361, all of the iPhones from the SE and up, as well as the iPad Pro, iPad Mini, and iPad Airs. The Insta361 also has a Android version. Right there, um, the Insta361 wins on specifications. All right, let's go to photo and video specifications. Standard 360 photos, timed 360 photos. Standard 360 video time lapse mode. That's good. Live streaming, free cast, good exposure modes, white balance. Okay, it looks like um, there are shutter priority modes that are also on the Insta 361. And the Insta 361 also has bullet time, which I don't know if you've seen this, but you can spin your camera around. It kind of looks like the Matrix. Um, you wouldn't really want to do that with your cell phone. As far as design, um, the uh, Insta360 Nano S weighs 20 grams, about 15 grams lighter than the Insta361. Um, and we already went through the dimensions. The Insta360 Nano S is lighter, but you also have to connect it to your phone. Whereas you don't have to with the Insta361. Um, storage and connectivity. Um, 
So the Insta360 Nano S has a lightning connector, micro USB 2.0, and supports up to 128 gigabyte um, SD card. Everything in the Insta360 One is the same, but Insta360 One also has Bluetooth. And then battery capacity, the Insta360 One has an 820 milliamp battery, whereas the battery on the Insta360 Nano S is 800 milliamp. And Insta360 Nano S lasts 60 minutes, whereas Insta360 One is 70 minutes. So, yeah, 10 more minutes, but I really haven't maxed out the battery. I've killed the SD card before I killed the battery <laughs> on this guy. All right, guys, so my conclusion. Is this camera for you? I don't know. Is there a reason for me to have a camera that just plugs into my phone? Absolutely not. That's not for me. Who is this camera for? I believe this camera is for someone who just wants to take selfies or doesn't want to think about what they're doing. They just want a plug and play option to um, live feed with someone. But do you really want to live feed with someone holding your phone all the time? Would you rather put it on a little desktop tripod? So for me, the Insta360 One is the better option. And if you're gonna spend the amount of money on the Insta360 Nano S, you might as well add 50, 75 bucks to it and gets the, get the Insta360 One. So, hope you guys liked the video. Catch you on the next video. This is Sean signing out.